All right. <laughs> well, for today, since it looks like it'll be just the four of us, did you guys have any questions or specifics that you wanted to address? Let me talk to you about this client that I have then. I'm having a really hard time with actually. <laughs> He's 72, I believe. And he, um, he's turning 73 in a couple of weeks, that's right. And so he is just realizing he's uh, lively, loves to like kind of hip, loves to go out with friends, um, has built himself a gym inside his house. And he's got like the weight, typical weight machines going on in there um, and rowing machine and a uh, rowing machine, elliptical, and a treadmill doesn't like doing cardio work, really forces himself to do 15 minutes a day. He tries to do 15 minutes a day. It turns out to be like 15 minutes or 20 minutes, three times a week. He um, has had disc injury and has had a few injections in there a long time ago. The, it's an ongoing sort of back thing. That wasn't the main reason that he needed my help, his left shoulder is bothering. I believe it's a supraspinatus issue, anterior shoulder on the left. So rotator cuff, I, I'm thinking by palpation and stuff like that, that it's um, supraspinatus tearing, partially tearing, I'm hoping, um, not a full thickness tear. He was given exercises a long time ago by somebody, I don't really know who. And so he's that kind of guy that thinks more is better, more weight is better. And so he's not a very big guy. Um, and so I would say probably about five foot 10, um, pro a little overweight in the stomach, not very built, right? And pretty thin, you know, pretty thin otherwise. Uh, not a lot of body awareness, his posture is crooked. So he stands with a side bend, um, I wonder if I can copy him for you. Let me see if I can mimic for you, show you what a stance looks like. So he stands like this. Had no idea. And actually a little like this. Head forward, I'll turn. Head forward, side bend. Um, this, is, this is his posture. So we've now been working on He's let me work with him. I got, I got him a foam roller, which he was so shocked at how hard it was to get on and off the floor, let alone on and off the foam roller. I had no idea how stiff he was. Um, his posture, he had no idea he was side bent. I don't know how you can have no idea that you're side bent or not see it, but he was really side bent. And so now that I brought his awareness to it, he's really working on changing that he is working on and he is able to get his shoulders back a little bit more, but I can't get him away from wanting to use these heavy weights. So today I showed him internal external rotation of the shoulder on his gym equipment. And I went to lower the weight and I put the one block of weight on. And I tell you, it was hard for me to do <laughs> internal external rotation. And he didn't even want me to take the weight that low down so um i'm working on getting the weights lighter and lighter and then he's doing uh raises like this and he wants to do he was doing it with nine kilograms in each hand that's 18 pounds and this in each hand and then he's trying to do them like this and i was like maybe we should just eliminate the overhead part because the mechanics weren't right and then I said, and maybe we'll do the ones to the side like this instead of straight arms out, because that will make it a little easier. And maybe you should lighten the weight. And he's like, oh, no, but, you know, I've already lightened the weight once. And so Genevieve, you know, gym people, <laughs> it's the convincing somebody that lighter weight is the better bet. I got him to understand a little bit that we need to stabilize so using those deep abdominals, abdominals and not but he's still, when I ask him to exhale and tighten, he's going <gasps> like that still. So I'm still <laughs> trying to unwind that a little bit. But um, so anyway, 
there's my story. If you guys have any ideas on how to, how do we get a patient who wants to work hard when they're working because they don't understand the stability, like how to stabilize from the inside very well. They only feel it when they feel their muscles working strongly. How do you get them down? And this is, it's harder. I think if he would be 30 or 40, it'd probably be a lot harder to slow him down. At least being 70, he's not as, there's not so much ego attached to how much he's lifting as there is, would have been, I think if I had met him at age 40, for example, but um, I don't know. There might be so, more because he's scared. He's re- he, now he's at an age where he's like, "Oh God, I'm really losing it." There might be more. There might be, yeah. You know? But how do you do the more is not better talk? Yeah. What's the more is not better talk? <laughs> and I don't have any Pilates equipment because I'm at his gym. Right? So I, I have my roller. I can't get him on some other Pilates equipment and make him shaky. I feel I I seems uh, am I on oh yeah it seems like trying to go back to body weight exercises if you can mm-hmm. you know because I remember yeah. having having clients um, this one guy in particular that you used to see and we did assist with and he told me oh yeah I do you know fifty push-ups a day or something like that I don't know I do them with my feet on the wall or I'm like oh okay. <laughs> And I mean, he was so wingy and so saggy. It was ridiculous. And when I made him do them properly, he's like, oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it's something to work on. So I don't know. Body weight. Yeah, maybe putting it back to body weight. Get away from the weight. He won't. He has a bear band. He doesn't like to use it. He wants to use the machines. But I can't get the machines light enough. There's no light option, you know? Well, plus so, the machines, right? They isolate so much that it doesn't give right that's what i've read anyway it does it doesn't it's, they're not as good at getting that full body work they're not and not which is why i'm using the weight the pulley on the weight for internal external rotation biceps curl rowing bent arm straight arm but he still wants to put on more and more weight and i keep <laughs> to take it off because when he goes to do the exercises right what happens is he goes to pull and he ends up because he's trying so hard to pull and he can't maintain this and pull and pull and pull. But he can't maintain that stability and do it. He's like thrusting it back, thrusting it back. Yeah. And leaning back. So I had him bend his knees a little bit and move a little bit into a squat, trying to find ways to stabilize the torso so that we're more isolating those movements so that, I'm hoping that if I can get him into more isolation of the exercise, he'll find it too hard and then say, oh, but now I have to take the weight a little lower. And then I'll be like, yay, we can take the weight lower. <laughs> but I, that's the only kind of trick I can think of. I think the body weight would be good. He, could, he can hardly bridge up without cramping because he his hamstrings are not used to working that way. He was so shocked at how tight his muscles were. So he's trying to stretch, but you know, even there he's sort of throwing his body around. He's not really contained yet. So uh, I'm curious. I have no idea, but have you, um, do you have a, like an overall, I, I know you do, but like, have you talked to him and just presented like logically and the anatomical, like, this is what's going on, dude. And here's why, and here's why yeah. not. Because I, men, like, if they go, oh, and then, like, and this is how we get you to there. Here's the time frame. I mean, if, if in my experience, like, if men, they go, oh, okay, dot, 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 dot. And here's how what you're doing is tearing you and taking back 10 steps. And how that's not going to help you achieve the goal. I don't know if that, it's just the logic part. And Yes, I, I mean, that's a good point. What I find is that I end up walking this fine line. I don't want to turn the person off and say that everything you've been doing up to this point sucks and we need to change it all. Because then all of a sudden, Correct. I'm telling him something that somebody else told him. Like I'm contrasting something that he's believed to be true for a long period of time. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to go that route. So I wanted to try and keep some of the stuff he was doing, just fix it. But it's really hard to fix it. He won't 
do we're doing um we do the first half is manual work and then we do the movement piece of that um it's really hard to fix somebody uh when they have set a set pattern so well, teachability teachability yeah it's changing mindset yeah. right and that's and you know maybe the right way is to move away from anything he's ever done before and make it right. all new right maybe and it's it's suggests suggesting not it's gentle maybe suggestings leading yep. gently away and i think Nana, you're your approach because of how you say and couch things it's, it's very you're good at that anyway yeah. my two cents yeah i i wonder yeah, I mean, go ahead jen oh sorry i was just gonna say i along sort of those lines um you know, maybe taking some of those same exercises that he's used to and done, um, but really making it clear that it, that, okay, we're going to think about this in a different way and do this with a yes. different, like, yeah. the, we're not doing, we're like, this is going to look sim similar, but it's a completely different exercise. Um, Absolutely. Like, fit that way. I don't know if that Mindset. would help. Um, but also along the lines of what Kim was saying with the body weight exercises, like just blowing them down and like, instead of the allowing the, the thrust <laughs> he's going to do, like, okay, can you take, can you do this motion and take five complete seconds to get from here to there? And mm -hmm. I guarantee he won't be able to do that. <laughs> I know he won't. He won't. Um, it's, it's, I, don't, um, I don't know if that's gonna, you know, just be frustrating for him then. Um, yeah. But I think I think the right approach is making it different. So either different exercises or naming it different or showing it differently or say, yeah, we're gonna use your equipment, but we're gonna do it differently. The disadvantage I have is I don't know the equipment very well. And you know, every machine power system is a little bit different. So it's hard to, to find the right piece and the right angle of everything the first time when I look at it on the spot and I don't wanna waste the time doing that while he's going through, I wanna try and... So I think as I get more familiar too, I'll be able to go, well, let's try this instead. Or why don't we try pulling from here instead? Or how about this way instead? Um, so, but I think the key is right, slow, slowing down. I do that, we do that on the mat. We make people count to five going up and down. Um, so maybe that would work. I'll let you know, I'll give you that <laughs> next okay. week. But of course, yes. there's like people like uh, my client this morning who you tell him to take five seconds to do something and he'll just <laughs> isolate it for five. <laughs> <laughs> Five like, squeezy pulses. <laughs> I'm like, spit it out. So it like. <laughs> we'll wait four seconds and then go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. The yes. other thing I was thinking is ways to make it, um, and I can't think of much necessarily for the upper body, to make it more functional. You know, we use lunges and squats. Lunges for getting up and down off the floor, squats for picking things up off the floor. I'm trying to think of what, I mean, walking for like the lat work. I don't know. I'm just trying to yeah. relate things to what he needs to do in his everyday life. Yeah, we did. I mean, we did look at his computer setup and everything. Um, what was interesting is that the last so I've seen him four times now or five times now. And the last time I saw him, he said, you know, what's so interesting is after the second time you came, my shoulder pain went away and my back pain has been pretty good. And then this week he said, I really exercised this week. I exercised pretty hard. And last night I woke up and my shoulder was really hurting when I rolled over it at night in bed. And I was like, Ooh, okay. So maybe, maybe we weren't as successful as I thought we were being. And then he said, you know, I worked out really hard this week and I, and I was doing these exercises and maybe it's one of those. I did more exercises. Maybe it's one of those. And I said, well, maybe we should look again at those exercises. So that's why he was a little bit agreeable to, but I had to kind of coax him down and say, you know, maybe 
if you do a little lighter weight and then let's see how you feel at night and then we can build it back up, you know, but I didn't want to say, don't do all your exercises. Let's just redo them all. Because I felt like that's a way to, that's a great way to lose somebody's confidence. Mm -hmm. I think too, there's that fine line of you want them to be able to do what they feel comfortable and what they like doing, but you don't want them to do it all the wrong way or with bad mechanics, which I think is what's happening. So Hmm. Um, so that was my challenge this week. I have to share with you, Zaina. I watched your um, one of your videos real quick the other day where you had the ball under your chin. Oh, yeah. And it was some great stuff. But there was one point where you were sitting there cross-legged, sitting up, sorry, and you had the ball under your chin. And I just start cracking up. It looked so <laughs> funny. And I, I said, Gordon, come here, look at this. And he was laughing. Because <laughs> I had that one there. snapshot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're going to post tip of the day, you might, I don't know, depends on what the reaction you want. Because it will get, it would be laughing. That would be good. Be like, I'm happy to make... What the hell is she doing sitting there with a ball <laughs> in her chin? <laughs> Sit with it here and start telling, talking to people. Welcome to today's tip of the day for today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you must be wearing a turtleneck. I cheated because I was wearing a turtleneck. It's a lot easier if you have a turtleneck on have the ball stay. Yeah. I, I wonder if, you know, the size of the person. So I tried that ball today with my, one of my clients this morning, uh, a man in his early 70s. Uh, and um, I think the ball was kind of small. And I wondered if I should have used one of the little bit bigger balls. You can use a little bigger. Yeah. So that yeah. I, what Kim's talking about, let me grab my little ball. <laughs> so you guys can all laugh at me. So this week, the theme was hold on to your head. So I was trying to, in the Tuesday class, if you guys wanted to look at it, what I did is I took them through a lot of um, just little neck exercises and I put the ball right there. <laughs> and so the, so the idea is um, oh, yeah, not... The turtleneck helps, yeah. The turtleneck helps. It just kind of yeah. it for me. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cheaty. <laughs> I didn't tell them that. Don't take them through a secret. You have to <laughs> only demonstrate this in winter time, okay? So, but the idea is a lot of people think looking down is that motion, whereas looking down should be this motion. Oops. Right. That's how I actually should look downward is by looking down not by going forward to look down, right? Very different on the neck. In the first one, we get neck shear forward. So the spinal cord column is going from here, this way forward. Each, each level is like staircase, yeah? If we look this way down, I'm actually getting flexion now, right? Not shear. So the blocks aren't going forward, they're actually rounding and that's, the good mechanic for the head and neck. So I was trying to, and the other piece of that is if we have this sheared forward head to posture, remember these rectus capitae muscles? I didn't say all this in the class, right? But this is why, this is the why behind it. These rectus capitae muscles are the little short muscles at the very back. Capitae, remember, refers to the cap or the skull. The rectus, rectus erectus is always the straightening or the little, little um, things that hold you up muscles. If you see here rectus, you should think er erecting or building up. So the little rectus capitae muscles run the straight, there's the straight ones, there's the obliques. Um, and they hold the head in this posture. So if they get short, if you go forward chin a lot, they get short and tight and it gets really hard to get up again into this length. So one way to work them, to stretch them is to chin tuck into yourself, right? So I told them the cueing was the ball goes in, you look in towards your throat, right? The ball you're bringing in towards your throat. You don't wanna try and press the ball down here, right? I'm just letting my chin drop into my throat and the ball into my throat. And that's gonna open up these rectus capitae muscles back here. Yeah, so 
Yeah, you could use a towel hole. I cube them either a small ball, tennis ball, towel hole, something like that, that you could just put there. And we worked through uh, exercise, these exercises and the other ones we worked through were the isometrics. So, and then I actually had them work with the ball on quadruped and I told them it's okay if the ball drops. The idea is not necessarily that the ball stays on the whole time, but that we can get set because that setting here makes this length at the back of my neck. I want that length at the back of my neck. I wanna pull the ball towards my throat a little bit. And then I have my good, nice long head neck posture here. And my eye focus is between the thumbs. That gives my head the right line for anything, for posture. And then from that posture, then we can take that posture upright and we end up in our good aligned posture. So you could use this as a little exercise, but just make sure it's not going forward to press right. It's coming in, doing little presses. They could even hold the ball there, but with a finger and do it. Gentle, really gentle, right? Because remember, we want to get, um, to get small muscles on, this is just basically what we were talking about, but to get the small muscles to fire, we can't use brute force. We're not going for maximum contractions. We're going for gentle little contractions, right? To get a little bit, those small muscles on stretch and the small neck flexors firing, we want little motions, not ha, ha, right? We're not trying to do big motions. So that was the goal of this. So you could use it as a cue, you could do it even just having them hold it there and do a little press. You could have it, um, you could even do the little isometrics was what I finished class with on Tuesday was teaching them that if you go and you feel a restriction in motion and you put index finger with index finger strength, so not a lot of pressure at the temple and turn into it, for example, and relax and just press, and relax. Now I should be able to get a little more rotation into that direction. The reason that works, any ideas why that works? Sorry. Why do you think that works? Sort of engaging this muscle right here, these, to me. Maybe I'm pressing too hard, I don't know. You're pressing too hard. I mean, does the slight resistance kind of allow the, the... Think of it, you're, I think you've got the idea, Jen. I'm gonna interrupt just a second, hold that thought. Think about what we do to activate your deep abdominals. Do we have them do a hundred sit-ups as fast as they can? Or do we have them do what? Curl. Little curls. Curl. Big motions, Curl. little motions. Yeah. Or what do we do? Uh, transverse abdominus. How do we get transverse abdominus on? Do we Breathing. send our legs out as far as we can go and hope for the best? Or do we <laughs> the motion? Small movement, isn't it? It's just kind of, isn't it stretching? You just kind of breathe into it and then each time a little, take it a little bit further. You're getting, yes. you're trying to activate it. So are they, the, what are we, what? Okay, yes. Okay, you guys are right. How do you deactivate your rectus abdominis? Exhale go back to you you go back to the whole motion and release you release what does it say that again you activate the surrounding muscles activate the surrounding muscles which happen to be the transverse abdominals and obliques oblique which have exactly which happen to be deeper and smaller mm. right so if I take a motion and I throw my body, why didn't I like this client of mine? Why don't I like his throwing motions? Which muscles is he activating when he's throwing his body around to get the motion? Big, big ones. ones. Big, big ones. Traps. Yeah. Big traps, maybe some triceps. Mm -hmm. God knows. I don't know what else he's doing. <laughs> Everything is going on. You know, like it's all going on. 
So if, if we're moving fast and moving big, we're going to get big things on. If we do sit-ups as fast as we can, who's working? Rectus. Rectus and possibly hip other flexors. big hip flexors, <laughs> right? So that's not stabilizing us, right? So, and when we want to stabilize, we need to inhibit the big muscles. And in the abs, we inhibit by exhaling, dropping the tummy in. How, when rectus abdominis works, what do you see happening in the abdomen? You know, what does it look like? Yes, right, Genevieve. The belly goes out, right? So the belly is gonna stick out if rectus abdominis works. You could try it. You could just do a full sit up and see what happens. Your tummy is gonna go right out and maybe even your hip flexors go on, right? So if you tuck your feet under a heavy thing and sit up, you're gonna get big belly pooch. Right? We inhibit that big belly pooch or the rectus abdominis by having you exhale, pulling in to tighten rather than allowing the pooch to happen. So if we go here and find our little uh, index finger amount of strength, right, pressure, what and we go to end range. So let's say I go to end range here. I take my finger and I give my index fingers worth of pressure. So just a little bit pressure. I turn my head into that pressure. And then I release and I get more motion. I have, all I've done is inhibit my big muscles from working. And when normally a lot of times in my neck, when I get stuck or when the muscles get stuck or the neck gets stuck it's, and it's muscular, it's because big muscles like upper trap, sternocoidal mastoid, maybe even the scalenes all get kind of crazy tight. Or maybe the first rib elevates and I get kind of stuck in this posture. And that's what's that posture is inhibiting my neck turning. So if I then take this and go, oh wait, I have other little rotators. Remember in the spine, Lisa, especially you had anatomy most recently, right? We have these little muscles, rotatoris, we have yep. these little spinal ones, they're all up and down. We've got multifidi all the way up and down. We've got yep. all kinds of little muscles that can do all this work for us. If we tell those muscles to turn on, we need to work gently to turn those muscles on so the big ones don't come on. Then we mm -hmm. inhibit the big ones. The big ones get a break and we get more motion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's active inhibition is what we call it. Active inhibition, I like it. Okay. Active inhibition of those big muscles, yeah. So that's how we get them to relax actually. So we get the small muscles doing their job and the big ones don't have to anymore. Oh, isn't that called yeah. also the, um, that's when one muscle relax, it's like agonist synergy. It's, it's when one muscle mm -hmm. you, you're, you, when you have such good command of it, one muscle actually relaxes, allowing the, the correct muscles to do their business. Yes. The correct muscles start firing. So the muscle yeah. compensatory muscle can shut down and be quiet. correct. Yes. Okay. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that's all that these little isometrics do. And it just feels so nice to be able, you can do it as a side bend, but go to end range side bend, side bend a little more into your index finger, and then you get a little bit more. It's really, people are shocked at how well, look at that. I'm <laughs> been snowboarding. Hey, you know, my <laughs> speaking of that, Zaina, for your client, I know this says you might explain men always it's anyone likes to be in on the like oh that's brilliant that makes a ton of sense and if it's not explained if it's never been explained the way you just explained it like to anybody it may not have been you know it, a lot of people are not that is it's like brilliant and if he gets that it's like once you get that concept if you're you know i'm talking about you know, the guy you're training yes it, it makes so much sense and maybe he does maybe he doesn't but it's just like, oh, brilliant. That makes a, a ton yeah. of sense. And it's like, wow. And then I'm just suggesting maybe. Yeah, no, I've explained some and he gets oh, okay. the idea, but he doesn't get it in his body. Okay. He gets the idea because we talked about that for his back and how his deep muscles have to work. So he tries really hard to get the deep muscles to work, but he tries really hard to get the deep muscles to work. And that's the that's, problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so it's, it's learning. It's a, it's a process. Absolutely. I think explaining helps. I think but, the way um, that you it, making it look like you must have, it, it, it's a level of expertise and finesse and, and working up to that will allow it to happen. That, that makes it so like something that you want to achieve. I love the way you explain, you know what I mean? I, I love that. Yeah. 
Yes. So, it's okay. um, patience. Patience and persistence. <laughs> the lesson in patience. Yep, okay. <laughs> yes. And meeting people where they are, I think, is the hardest part because I just want to fix it. And I look at that and I go, oh, we can fix this. But it's, you can't fix it on somebody who doesn't understand the whole thing. I mean, he didn't even notice he was side bent in his posture. I would freak out if I saw myself side bent, but I would see it, right? He doesn't, he didn't see it until I pointed it out. A lot of people don't see it. He didn't realize how stiff he was till he, till I had him actually get on the floor and he realized how hard it was for him to get on and off the floor. Because you're realize. in it. What's that? Because you're in it. You don't know. It's like, yeah. a bro you can't fix a broken brain because it doesn't know it's broken, right? So you don't know you're right. broken until someone goes, oh, wait, let's correct it. You go, whoa, I see the light. Yeah. 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 You've so, got awareness, awareness to him. We'll see. I'm working on it. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right. Thanks, All right. you guys.